Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same uh, physics demo that we did in class. Um, so this is a, a demo scene that I put together for you. You can find it on Canvas under our files, and it's this um, Unity package called Physics Demo 1, which um, you should be able to find in there. And inside of it, um, I have this scene here, which is called Ball Example. Let's go ahead and open that up. If your scene doesn't look like this, if everything's magenta and you can't see it, you probably are using the lightweight render pipeline. That's not a problem. Just uh, select everything that appears that, that pink color. And under the shader, go ahead and pick one um, from the lightweight render pipeline. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't matter what, really. Uh, I don't have it here because I'm not using that pipeline. But um, anyway, so. This scene looks like this. If I hit run, I have a ball, which I can click and drag and throw it around. And it will never come back. There it is. Um, and I have some invisible colliders on either side here to kind of keep the ball from leaving the area, except somehow I made it jump through it. Oh, well. <laughs> um, so what we have in the scene is our main camera. And this has a script that I've added that lets you click and drag rigid bodies. You can use this script in your projects as well. Um, you can adjust certain features of, of how it springs things around. You could decrease the springiness of the clicking and dragging or dampen it a little more. You also could turn off that green line by uh, right clicking here and removing this line renderer. So this by default, if, if it has a line renderer attached to it, it'll use the line renderer to draw that line. Otherwise, it won't draw anything. Um, so feel free to use that. And it, this will work on any object in your scene, which is a rigid body, which we'll get into in a second. Next, we have our walls. So these are just a bunch of um, invisible colliders that you can use. Uh, well, that, that are kind of creating uh, boundaries around where we can throw the ball. So it, it'll bounce off of these things. And I literally just placed inside of here a bunch of these cubes and deactivated the mesh renderer. So you can have um, colliders, which don't have graphics. Here's the floor. It's just a quad with a mesh collider. Um, and then we have lights, which we don't care about. And then we have our sphere. And um, this sphere bounces around and stuff because it has both the sphere collider um, and it has a rigid body attached to it. So just for demonstration's sake, I'll go ahead and add um, another object to this scene. So I'll go game object, 3D object, and I'll try with a cube. And there's the cube pretty much right next to my sphere. I'll just move it so it's actually right next to it. OK, there it is. And you can see if I hit play, This cube doesn't do anything. It just kind of sits there. Now it does have a collider attached to it, which means that this, this sphere, which is a rigid body, will not pass through it. It knows that that's a solid object. <clears throat> to make the cube actually affected by physics, I'll go ahead and add a rigid body to that. So to do that, I'll click Add Component. I'll just type rigid body in the search bar. And there's two different kinds of physics engines in Unity. There's a 2D one and a 3D one. Um, they're not mutually compatible. So don't try using 2D physics elements and 3D ones together. I'll just stick with the normal 3D rigid body. And when I click, there's my sphere, and there's my cube. So the rigid body component has a lot of different uh, properties that we can adjust. Um, mass, drag, angular drag, use gravity, and is kinematic. They're all um, important and useful. So the first one is mass. It does about what you think. If I increase this number, it'll make the cube heavier. So now it kind of takes more force from my kind of springy clicking and dragging to pull it around. Um, I can increase the drag, which sort of affects how it moves through the air. It'll make it sort of slow down. 
you can see it's falling very slowly. I'll pick it up, toss it, and it'll kind of come to a stop as it falls. So you can use this to simulate stuff like leaves, parachutes, anything that has like a lot of drag. Or you could even do it in a more subtle way. You can uh, notice that it's spinning around a lot, even though it's falling very slowly. Right, spinning a lot. So I can adjust that with angular drag. It's the same idea as drag, but it affects rotation rather than position. So I'll increase my angular drag a little bit. I'll hit play. And now you should see, as I throw this around, the cube is not spinning around nearly as much. Additionally, I can turn off gravity for this object, so it'll float around as though we're in space or underwater. I'll uncheck that box, hit play, and now it just sits there, but I can still click and drag it and throw it around. Oh, I want to be careful. If I throw it up off the screen, now it won't come back down. You might have noticed um, that as I'm playing with my cube, it can kind of move around in the scene. Oh, oops, let me get it back. So it might come, uh, go away from the camera or come close, closer to it, depending on what happens. There we go. Now you can see it's clearly behind the sphere. And the sphere doesn't do that. The sphere stays in place. It stays at the same distance from the camera, I should say. So in order to constrain my cube so it doesn't move back into the scene, I can use these constraints here at the bottom. So I can freeze position or rotation around a given axis. So if I wanted, for instance, this cube to only move up and down, I could freeze the X axis and the Z axis. And now this cube only moves up and down. Because Y is the vertical axis. If I want to make it behave like the sphere, where it stays this same kind of distance from the camera, there's my camera, and I want it to stay on this kind of plane, I can just freeze it along the Z axis, so now it doesn't go um, forward and back in the scene, and it will behave the same way as our sphere. Um, so in order to get these two objects interacting with each other, we can, we can kind of connect them together using different joints. So I can add, um, to start with, I'll try the spring joint, which basically connects the two objects with an invisible spring. So I'll just type spring under add component, find my spring joint, there it is. And I'll uh, drag my sphere into this area, connected body. So my spring joint is attached to my cube, and I've connected it to the sphere. So this needs to be a rigid body. You can see now these two objects um, are connected and kind of pull on each other if I try to move them apart as though there's an invisible springy thing between them. You notice they don't collide with each other though. And why is that? If I want them to collide with each other, I have to turn this on. Enable collision here. Play. And now they actually won't collide with each other. It's kind of like super tennis. Okay. <laughs> so that's one way I could connect these together. I could also control the springiness with the spring, so I can increase that a lot. And you'll see they'll sort of snap together. You can see how much tighter that spring is. Just pulls that sphere right along. And I could increase the damping um, so that the spring kind of doesn't overshoot its position as much, is basically what that does. 
So you can see it's uh, it's hard to tell here, but it, it does affect it quite a lot. If you're, if you're using a spring joint and it seems too chaotic, try increasing the damping. Okay, so that's the spring joint. If I want my two objects to be, and I'm, I just right clicked and hit remove component to remove that spring joint. If I want to um, combine these two objects together uh, so that they stay a fixed distance from each other, I can uh, use a character joint. So I'll add component and I'll start typing character joint. And actually, if you want to see all the different kinds of joints, I can just type joint and you can see there's a ton of them. Hinge joint, fixed joint, configurable joint, character joint, but I like the spring joint and the character joint best. And the fixed joint is useful too. But character joint. So I'll drag my sphere into this connected body field, just like before. And this, um, this joint allows me to edit uh, how much the joint can rotate. So this is actually used mostly for use, uh, creating rag dolls. Um, but so I could make it really uh, rotate quite freely the way that maybe your shoulder would or constrain it down to just like one axis, like how your elbows move. You can see here they're pretty much stuck together. <laughs> and uh, that's it for your kind of basic introduction to the physics system.